so welcome, welcome, welcome our brilliant and beloved colleague, Jahan. We so appreciate your consistent visionary leadership and solidarity. And as always at Setsi, we begin all things by giving thanks to our creator, by giving thanks to the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We give thanks to all our ancestors, all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We give thanks to all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. So Jahad, can you please introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers and share a bit about your remarkable work? My God, I don't want you to stop. I want you to keep going, these inspiring and opening remarks. Thank you, Victor. And, and uh, it has always been inspiring and wonderful to be in your orbit and, and to, to see what you've been doing. And uh, uh, thank you for always uh, trying to pull us in being in the right direction. And uh, I am delighted to be here. Thank you. Uh, my name is Shahad Lawil, by way of introduction. I'm the executive director of the Law Foundation, and I've been here for 10 years. And uh, it's people like Victor's and others that really got me to this place. So I'm very grateful we are in a position to work with young people across the province who are impacted by um, various systems that are, have not been working for them. And uh, the financial system and the flow of capital is one of those systems that just underlines all of these challenges. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much. And since the day we met, you've always been a source of inspiration and a remarkable ally and mentor and guide in this work. So my next question is a perfect segue. What's inspiring you right now? What has you curious or what's keeping you up at nights? Yeah, this is a great question. I, you know, I'm constantly inspired by people that I have the privilege of crossing the path is planned or unplanned. Um, I work in a space where it's dominated by passionate young people who are not, the f as I say, the future or the leaders of tomorrow. They are leading now. They are doing things that are incredible. They're changing their own communities and they're forcing people like us, like Laidla and other foundations to pay attention and to correct course because things have not worked for many years. Um, so I'm constantly inspired. I feel quite privileged to be uh, in, in, in these spaces. Uh, what's keeping me up at night is the idea of being um, in a foundation and in a sector that has a lot of privilege and a lot of assets, and we only worry about the disbursement quota of 5%, and we pay very little attention to the 95% and how it's invested and how it's going to communities. So I how do we invest and grant in the same space is something that I've been grappling with and I know others have. This is really something that both inspiring and frightening at the same time because we have to get it right. I couldn't agree more. I always felt that even though there was some incredible advocacy around the Dakota, I feel it fell short in terms of the sector and the fact that just primarily anchor institutions, hospitals and universities were best positioned, but not really focused on the margins and the periphery of the economy. So once again, I applaud your leadership, the activism, the advocacy, and the, and the awareness building that you've done around this work. So my next question is, what challenges and barriers do you face in your work? And what are some of the approaches you and your colleagues are taking to overcome some of these challenges and barriers? I mean, the challenges remain to be that a lot of what we do really hasn't changed in, in many years. So this, and, and this is a sector that is focused on really, you know, grant making, for example, is very mechanical. So application comes, you know, they, they ask, you flow the fund. But we haven't really been, and what's the challenge is to get that, you know, that kind of massive uh, buy-ins buy from the sector where there's these, these things that are considered outliers and promising practices shouldn't be otherwise they need to be the practice of the entirety of the sector so that's something that it's uh, it, you know the challenge is that you you know those who really want to do things continues to be uh on on the sidelines and the majority remains tentative and hesitant so we want to make sure that the sector at least we work with philanthropy that is quite genuine about changing the world and they really are uh, uh, committed to a better society is that to do it a little better and to make sure that voices of the community is centered uh, 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 at every conversation, not only in the grant making, but also the investment and the flow of, of resources that are that are sustaining uh, so many other communities, but not ours. 
I couldn't agree more, sir. So my next question is, do you have a set of key priorities right now in your work you'd like to amplify to our community of practice? So I, I, again, the question of, and that's not really original to lay law, it, the, the challenge of how do we grant and invest in the same space? So how do we work with communities with a suite of options to provide them to do the work that needed to be done? So how do we better align our um, investment approach and strategy with our granting and community work, you know, is is, 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 is something that we, we really want to struggle with. I think the partnership with the community, the advocacy uh, of the community, we, we really believe that it is the voices of the community that will get us to do the, the groundbreaking work that needs to be done because that's really who matters at the end. So the, these are the, 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 the ideas and the challenges and what's really making us look forward to, to the next five years as we, as we continue to think strategically to look forward. But it's, it's, it's that how do we deal with these, with these issues as well? Thank you so much. I really appreciate all that context. And once again, just a consistent leadership. So my next question, what is your ultimate goal and what does success look like and feel like to you and your colleagues? Well, obviously the ultimate goal of of, of the foundation is to ensure that young people and their communities are connected and included and have the opportunities and the options like everyone else. So that's really the, the, the very basic and quite simplistic approach. Um, we, Our vision is for a society where young people who are impacted by the justice, education, and child welfare system are, are no lo longer held back by it. They have the tools and the resources to uh, thrive despite the challenges by these systems. Uh, as an organization, we made it clear and a priority that indigenous and black youth continue to experience the most disproportionate impact by various systems, but these three systems in particular that we feel are quite suffocating, have longstanding uh, 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 challenges and limitations uh, and ultimately we really want to have a meaningful impact on these issues ensure that young people are no longer held back by the fact that their schools may not be meeting their needs the justice system might have some inherent systemic challenges and the child welfare system is designed with the best interest of not the kids in mind someone else so these are issues that we want to make sure that we advocate for and ultimately success looks like that every young person exiting the child welfare system exits to a, an opportunity and is ready and every uh, young person who has an experience with the justice system gets a fair uh, a chance at um, getting the help and the support they need and the education system works for everyone and it works great for everyone, not just for some, you know. So that these are the, the ultimate issue. You know, in terms of how, how we manage our portfolio and our assets, which is our biggest really leverage, is that our, our ultimate uh, goal is to ensure that our assets constantly and at all times serve our mission and purpose. And that's really, to, 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 to put it uh, mildly up. That's, there's no other exception to that. That's incredible. Incredible, absolutely incredible. And I feel when you look at those pillars that Laid Laws had for quite some time, it really centers justice, access, inclusion, diversity, decolonization, equity. And I love the way you framed out that piece around the capital, because a lot of times there is this, this notion that large asset allocators or folks that are leading endowments don't have an obligation to young people or to the mission vision. It's almost like this, this, this mission drift that happens often. And I love the fact that you're always able to censor those key pillars and the, the targeted demographics that you want to engage that are obviously being disproportionately engaged by systems that are a lot of times I mean, oppressive you know, and, and very problematic. So once again, I just applaud your consistent leadership and all that you're doing on behalf of so many. So my last question, do you have any closing thoughts or calls to action for our listeners and our viewers? Well, I think the call to action is that our communities have to really pay closer attention and demand more from institutions like Laidlaw and others, uh, demand more accountability 
uh, demand more responsiveness and relevance and to ensure that what we are doing and saying is meeting needs and not just because we think that's what the community needs, but also the uh, the allyship and the friendship you know of, of the community is important to, to check in with us to ensure that we are also uh, um, getting our uh, inspiration and 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 learning the, the the magic that is happening around our communities that sometimes in these roles we feel a bit disconnected from so just to continue to insist on us being connected is also a, and this is also an invitation for people to reach out connect and include us in the incredible uh, uh, work that is making a difference in, in the lives of so many people on the ground. So we want you to force us to bring philanthropy to the field. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. And in a world with such deep divides and polarization right now, I think that's a, that's a beautiful call to action in terms of just our interconnectedness and the interdependence that we have as human beings. So once again, I applaud everything you stand for, my friend. You've been a beloved, brilliant colleague, mentor, guide, and leader in so many ecosystems and so many sets. So once again, I just really give thanks. Uh, very kind. kind. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. And I'm always inspired by your presence, by your uh, incredible wisdom. For a young person, you really exude so much wisdom and love and i really appreciate that so thank you for including me in this opportunity and providing me the chance to to speak to you and to your listeners thank you i appreciate friend. you and as always at setsu we close this interview this conversation yeah. the way it began by giving thanks to the, our creator to the original stewards of the various lands around to all our ancestors to all those who toiled without compassion or compensation we give thanks to all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build share and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. Thank you so much, Jihad. I appreciate you. Thank you. This is the best Monday morning conversation I've had in years. So I appreciate it. Thank you, my friend.